I want to ask you about sexual harassment. You write a lot about that. I wrote a whole book on that. Yeah, yeah. sexual harassment. That was Me my too. first book. Yeah. yeah, I studied you. So you studied me. I read you, your you, books. You, I, you read up I, on me. I yeah, love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, how do you find sexual harassment? How do you fi define that? So, so I don't tend to define things in my work. I like to ask, how have other people defined things? How do other people understand it? And then, why? So my first book was called, What is Sexual Harassment? Right. The second book is, What's Wrong with Fat? And then I have a colleague who told me, you can't have any more questions <laughs> in your titles. <laughs> right. So that's it. Well, but, at least you made people think, what is that really? What is it? Yes, and so right. um, this was actually the same, this study began as my doctoral dissertation. Right. And so I compared the United States and France. And I noticed that they had very different ways of defining sexual harassment in their laws, and that those laws then had implications for how everyday people on the street and in, in companies, et cetera, understood what sexual harassment wa was. Um, and so, so that was my contribution. It wasn't for me. There are legal definitions, and those legal definitions are different in, across different countries. There's corporate definitions and different corporations that are going to differ. So there's multiple ways that we can define what this is, issue. Is there one primary definition for sexual harassment? Well, one that, I know they have all those other little definitions, uh -huh. but is there one primary definition? So the United States, only the United States, not other countries, has a definition that was originally developed in the EEOC guidelines. Okay. Um, the Equal Opportunity, right. um, EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission guidelines. That's the same administration that, it was the administration that enforces Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which makes it illegal to discriminate on the basis of race um, as, and, other, and other things as well as sex. Right. And so the EEOC guidelines have defined two different kinds of sexual harassment. First of all, in the United States, unlike, for instance, in France, sexual harassment is a subset of sex discrimination. And but it's, for me, like, so it's a form of discrimination, and it may happen because of, there's two kinds, this quid pro quo in which you say to an employee. Do me, do me a kind of favor, because I'm black mm -hmm. and I'm slow and I'm, I'm trying to figure it all out as you're speaking. Uh, define, is, give me a, like a, give me an, a, a normal definition for sexual harassment. What is it? Yeah, well, so there's no normal definition for sexual harassment, but an American legal definition from yeah. the EEOC guidelines would be it's a form of sex discrimination in which you make either quid pro quo, you make submitting to sexual activity a condition of employment, or behavior in the workplace is so um, pervasive that it in a, of itself becomes so severe or pervasive that it becomes a condition of employment. Oh, okay. It negatively affects your ability to do the job and it is then therefore considered a form of discrimination on the basis of sex. So to break that down is uh, a lot of these uh, companies have hired women to run them, right? And a lot of these women are harassing men. They discriminate against the men. They put the woman up first they, or they promote the woman over the man and they uh, do that. So is that sexual harassment? So mo the overwhelming majority of people who harass others at work are men. No, that's not true. It's absolutely true. Now, I, here I got we're proof in that's my... not true. <laughs> yes, what's But let proof? me hear yours first. Go ahead. Yeah. You're my no, guest. Well, so the studies that I have read, many studies, will show that the overwhelming majority of harassers are men. The overwhelming number of victims are women. Some, most of the men who are harassed are harassed by other men, although it does also sometimes happen that a woman will harass a man. And under the law, that is completely possible. The law is gender neutral. Um, it does not it does not say that only women can be victims and only men can be perpetrators. Um, so in either case, in terms of if you're in the case, the, in, under the context of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, you need to show that there, it was discriminatory, you were treated this way because of your sex, either man or woman, and you need to show that it negatively affected your employment in a way that was severe and pervasive. Do you, do you study men who have been sexually harassed by women? I don't study, I haven't studied, I haven't spoken to victims, men or women. And why not? 
that wasn't the that wasn't within the study. Whenever you do a research study, you have to make hard choices, and you know, I say to my, as I say to my graduate students, the best dissertation is a done dissertation. You got to <laughs> get it done. Yeah. And so I was already doing a lot. I looked at all of the legal history and court um, case law in, in, in the U.S. I looked at legal history in France. I did, I did interviews, but I did interviews with experts. I so. guarantee you, um, if someone took the time and did a study on sexual harassment from women to men, most of these women would be in jail today. They would be lined up with Harvey Weinstein, having lunch in jail, right? And I am encouraging men now, because I've heard so many stories over the last 30 years or so, I'm encouraging them to start reporting to women, having them arrested, documenting everything that happened, so that the men can start putting these women in jail and not let them get away with it. Is that a good idea? Because well, so, more men are being harassed so now. So Harvey Weinstein was was uh, No, 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 I'm asking just for, one particular question. Well, is so that the, a good suggestion? Well, the, w there is a big problem with it because we've been talking about sexual harassment know, it, under it, civil my, rights. My act suggestion of the, to the men. It's civil. It's a civil law, so you don't go, for, you don't go to jail. But under, I know, but my suggestion to men is to start to report to women well, for I sexual harassment, Well, I think anyone, right? anyone who's been victimized, yeah. man or woman, should report it and for men who have been and there are men who have been victimized and transgender people as well are very high, at high rates victimized but for men who have been victimized whether by a man which is much more likely or women no not today it's should, mostly women it, it's really mostly women well I would love maybe after we're done talking you'll send me those studies because I have been studying this topic study, for 30 years you have years. all the degrees yes and with my degrees and the studies I have never seen that statistic because they lied to you then but you've never <laughs> done a study that's why but I other people, other people have done said. Let me just finish what I'm saying. That I, I want to give you, I want to partially agree with you to say something, which is that it is. I think there are studies that suggest that when men have been victimized, especially sexually, it is more difficult for them to come forward and to report it because of the the gender stereotypes that men are supposed to be strong yeah. they're not supposed to be victimized that you know all all of this and so there's a a kind of a double stigma it's already difficult but that's to not a stigma a man is not supposed to be a beta male you got no but when that right. no when a man when a is, man should be a beta male right I'm not saying I'm saying that social society should a man be a beta male I'm not I don't deal in shoulds no would you marry a beta male that's a personal question. I'm already married, so I can't. Um, my my father used Is to say. Is he a beta? My father my father said about my husband that he's a he's a he's a what did he say? <laughs> he's a closet alpha. <laughs> that he's an alpha pretending not to be something like that. I have to remember. I have to ask my mom. Oh, so but, you were really an alpha male, but he pretended to be a beta male with you? That that he didn't he didn't come off as as. Um, he comes back as more laid back than well, maybe like he really male. is. Yeah. Amazing. But, yeah. The, the uh, Me Too movement, you heard sure. of that, right? Wouldn't you agree with me that they've gone too far with that? With that? It's a joke now? No, I would not agree. Why not? Why not? <laughs> but there's, we have so far to go. So we've, we, I mean, the truth is there... It's a real problem, and the, a tiny, tiny proportion of victims ever come forward. And and this, you know, I was not expecting this Harvey Weinstein. I was not expecting him to be convicted. This was a me big, either because this it was, was on a, false allegations, right? And that wasn't why. It's because so many women who have come forward with it's just so hard for women to win, even when they have when they're telling the truth again and again, which is the overwhelming majority of the time. It's very rare that you women You know why that is, up. right? Why, why what is? Why uh, sometimes women don't win when they make these accusations. You know why they don't win sometimes, right? Well, well I, I what, you're you gonna, what you're going to say, I'm what? sure, is not what I'm going to say. <laughs> <When you're> saying, <laughs> but why this is, is your show. No, so but you you're should. my guest. You're the expert. <laughs> why is it sometimes that women don't win those cases? Well, the... It's very hard to win a um, a case in criminal court of sexual assault. Right. the The whole criminal system is based, to, uh, and understandably so, rightfully so. We want to avoid people being wrongfully convicted, and so it's innocent. Beyond, you know, you have to prove that someone is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Does that concern um, you that these women can ruin the reputation of men by 
false accusation that that could happen? It's Does so that concern much. You? Of course, I wouldn't want that to happen yeah. to someone who was falsely accused. But it's what is much, much more common is so many more women who are victimized who never come forward. That's not true. No, it actually it is true. No. Believe me, I'm the expert. That's why you brought me yeah, out you're here. The <laughs> I'm telling you're you, the it's expert. true. You you're, might not like to think, listen, believe it, but it's you're true. You're the expert, but I have the common sense. So I know that's not true, right? <laughs> well, but let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Um, common sense is, a da is sometimes a dangerous thing. Common sense is the only way to go. It leads you to, to ignore facts and to reinforce your preconceived uh, assumptions. I know why. So be cautious about that. No, common sense is, is the problem is people don't use common sense anymore. They use the intellect, and the intellect lacks common sense, uh, and that's why the world going to hell in a handbasket. So why the hell am I sitting here? You, do you use common sense? You don't use. Common I do sense? use common sense, but I'm saying preconceived I notions. I you use common sense. Of course, I use common sense, oh. but I also like to see the facts and the studies. And I know that we can often assume things are right based on what everybody else, the kind of preconceived notions, and those are often wrong. Let me ask you this because of time. Um, yeah. Some of the time the women, most of the time, even though the courts are on the women's side, not the ladies' side, they can accuse you and say whatever they want and get away with it. But the reason that I'm glad that a lot of these cases the women lose is because Women are not on and on and on and on, but most women are, it's easy for women to lie and they don't mind destroying you. If they get angry at you, because a lot of women you hit on them and they go, Yeah, I want to do it, let's do it, let's do it. And then as soon as you do it, they get mad because they become addicted to you, they want to control you, and then they'll falsely accuse you. Mm. And the courts are set up to believe the woman over the man, so that's why this needs to end because a lot of these women don't mind destroying men. They're destroying the men's the men, children in the womb and outside the womb. We need to stop this movement before it goes too far. Don't you agree? It sounds like you've had some really painful experiences. Oh, no, I've never women. had that. I just I'm know really other sorry men. About that. I just know other men who have gone through that. But do you agree it's time to end this type of this crazy and so-called women? And look at the women in the movement. Nobody want them anyway. I think they're mad because no one wants them. They're like lesbians, and they're fat, they're ugly, they're uh, short hair. Nobody warned them. I think they're mad about that. Wouldn't you agree? No, I wouldn't. Sorry. I think we're talking past each other. What do you mean? I, I am speechless. What can I say? Why are you speechless? Because I, I, I am at a loss for words. No, I think the sexual assault and discrimination is a, is a really big problem. And um, I think that it's great that we're starting to address the issue, but there's a lot more to go. I do not think that the criminal justice system can solve this issue. I think we need to look into companies. And I mean, you were saying that women are running the companies. There's actually very few women in positions of power. It's overwhelming. And it's not just, it's not just women and men. Again, it's, it's overwhelmingly white men. What's wrong um, with that? What's wrong with it is that there hasn't been accountability, and when you what have do you mean by the, that? the the power inequalities and the fact that people are able to mistreat uh, people of lower status in the um, in the workforce is enabling some of the not just sexual so, harassment but also the gender discrimination and the racism. So you're saying and that and these things are you're often saying combined. That white men in position of power are mistreating employees. I'm saying that there, well, certainly it happens, and that there needs to be, you know, that, that the, we know that there's less sexual harassment when hierarchies are more flat, for instance, and that the greater inequalities of power, and when but people have no, have no one they can complain. There's no proof that white men, oh, there's men, been a, there's no, been a it's lot just of made studies. up stuff, it's not true. Okay. Well, but I gotta ask, is there sure. such a thing as a strong woman? Are women strong? I think women are very strong. Then why do they need laws to force people to do what they why cannot do, do? Why do men need laws to protect their rights? No, I no, mean, no. I'm is... asking, why do, if these women are strong, why do they need laws to force men to do what they want? I think men and women alike need laws. We, ha we are, we are a, a nation of laws. And that, that but is the laws to that protect, we have protect men you know, and women. They, the laws, why do they need special laws? Most of the time they don't protect. And most of the time, you're not going to be able to resolve your issue in court. 
um, the, a tiny percentage of these cases ever make it to court. So it's oh, not amazing. it's not enough. It's not like amazing to hear you say that. That's not true. It's so not. Have you talked to Gloria Allred lately? Oh, all the time. <laughs> How would you Every like, night before I go to sleep. How would you like to marry that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs>